Thank you very much. I appreciate being able to uh, launch into our company presentations today and start off with MSDX. And thanks for the panel. I think that was a wonderful way to uh, begin to talk about some of our companies. So my name is Marie Wesselhoff. I'm president and one of the founders of MSDX. And I'll begin our story, and it's great to start with a diagnostic company as one of the examples. So our story, three things. First of all, I'll share with you um, that MSDX is a personalized medicine solution. Our focus is in brain disease, and our products and services will um, provide very important information to the clinicians to help them make treatment decisions for an MS patient. It's all about making sure they're on the right therapy. The second key thing of our story is that we have a very innovative platform of technology that we'll talk about in a few minutes. And the key is while we start in multiple sclerosis, we'll be able to leverage that technology into a broader set of brain diseases. And the third key thing that we'll share in terms of our story is we also believe we brought some innovation to the delivery system and to the launching in the market, and we'll talk about that. My background has been in the diagnostic market my entire career, I hate to say how long that is, uh, starting on the provider side, then going into industry and uh, running uh, one of the diagnostic divisions at Cardinal and Baxter, and now I'm into the entrepreneurial world. And I have to say, Personalized Medicine Solution offers an opportunity to bring it all together, and that's what makes this very exciting. So our story, starting in brain disease. Um, we are very focused in bringing simple blood tests to monitoring brain diseases. And we're starting with multiple sclerosis, and I'll share in a few minutes why. So just a picture, there are $46 billion of laboratory tests sold every year, and there, there aren't any dollars relating to brain disease. It's time to change that, and that's what we're focused on. So we'll start with MS, but then ultimately our goal is to go into some other brain diseases. We've recently received a, par um, a Parkinson's grant from the Michael J. Fox Foundation as well. But what I'll share with you today is all multiple sclerosis focused. So this yesterday was the World MS Awareness um, uh, Day. And what I'd like to start with is the unmet need and why did we start with MS? Not only is there a significant market need, but the second is it's commercially feasible. And that's why we've started in this area. Uh, for those of you who may know someone who suffers with MS, you know it's a chronic disorder that often is diagnosed in, in the patient's 20s and 30s. Uh, chronic disorders are very important to our overall healthcare agenda in terms of costs. Uh, MS, as the disease progresses, so does disability. As disability progresses, not only does that affect quality of life, but it also affects cost of life. $1.2 million to manage an MS patient. But this is a hot spot right now. 20 years ago was the first therapy, disease-modifying therapy. There's no cure for MS. <laughs> Today there are nine FDA approved drugs and there are hundreds in the pipeline. So why is that important to a business like ours? The therapy is effective in between 40 to 60% of the patients, but they don't know which patient it's effective in. That's our goal, to be able to determine responders and non-responders. Today it's monitored with MRI. It's time to bring some blood testing uh, markers um, out to the market and offer them to the patient. So our goal is what was impossible until now, that we can now begin to offer um, a simple blood test for monitoring. We're not diagnosing, we're monitoring. That's part of what makes it commercially feasible. So our business model and the value proposition, our goal is that uh, on the left-hand side of this slide, you can see a patient would be drawn. That patient then would have a blood sample sent to a laboratory, either our laboratory, or they would use our products to analyze. That information would be go, go back to the clinician, and then the clinician would know whether or not that patient is responding to their therapy, and that's repeated. Just like in diabetes, a hemoglobin A1C would be our markers are universal, not specific to the therapy. So the value proposition to the clinician, it's important information to make treatment decisions. The, the value proposition to the patient is they want to make sure they're on the right therapy. To the, the payer, it's cost of life. If we can reduce that cost of care by 20 or 30% to make sure that that patient is minimizing their progression and their disability, 
that's a very significant savings in cost. And ultimately, our markers can also be used as new clinical endpoints for, for the next generation of pharmaceutical drugs to manage these patients. So our technology, moving from the unmet need to, you know, what is the innovation behind what we've done? And our story, of course, began with discovery of hundreds of biomarkers, but it's all about focus, like our panel said. We've honed that down to a panel of five biomarkers. You always want to get the most amount of information from the least amount of, of, of assays. And so I'll share with you what our technology is. But again, we call it window into the brain because for the first time, a simple blood test can actually provide meaningful insight and information into man better managing that patient. Here is the five, this is a list of the five biomarkers that we have honed down from the hundreds to focus on. So the key thing about, the key aspect about the five that we've selected here is it is a disease up approach as opposed to a top-down approach. We have a marker for each of the key disease processes that affect an, a multiple sclerosis patient. And they're not specific to an MS, they're specific to a disease process, not specific to MS but we'll start in MS. Each one of these have something to do with a very important process of how things move in and out of the brain, which is a very important thing in MS. You know, what is going on in the brain? How can those clues come back out into the peripheral blood? And likewise, how is that therapy going across the blood-brain barrier? This isn't meant to be a technical presentation, but I wanted you to see the, the high-level uh, biomarkers that we've selected to use in monitoring the MS patient. So where are we? How have we validated the technology? Uh, we have completed two studies with close to 500 samples from leading institutions like, like these. And I do want to say part of our reason for selecting um, uh, brain diseases is the, the uh, competency that we already have in the state of Arizona. We were very fortunate to start with Barrow Neurological Institute right here, working with Dr. Timothy Vollmer in some of our first studies. But we've gone on to expand sites that are listed up here all key opinion, opinion leaders. We're ready to launch our next study with funding, and that study will be done with UC Denver, and we'll take our biomarkers and we'll actually correlate them to MRI imaging. And we're doing that again with Timothy Vollmer up in um, UC Denver. So a couple of key things that we found from our studies. We've studied our markers in five of the nine therapies. We've studied before and after samples in three of the therapies. We've done some disease mechanism um, studies that have provided some very important data on how our products could be used as clinical endpoints. And then we've also done some animal model studies, not just human. So we've done a lot of work from the samples thus far, and I'd be glad to share the data with any of you at a later time. So, how do we make this into a business? How do we translate this into a very successful business generating revenue? We're unique in that we can offer our products as both a service as we launch, and I'll share that, as well as a product. In many cases, these sophisticated biomarker panels are often offered as a service only. But because MS is a chronic disorder, we need to get the tests close to the customer as we can for long-term adoption. Um, in this market. So our pathway to revenue you'll hear about is both service as well as um, products. We'll license it to um, people who already have technology in the lab. So one of the things I'd like to highlight is we're agnostic to what therapy they're on. So we don't have to do all these studies for each therapy. We're telling them whether their disease processes are going in the right direction or not. We're also agnostic to what capital equipment it's put on. What a good position to be in. So a simple immunoassay system, we measure proteins. It can go on um, equipment that's already in place. So we're almost the DVD for the DVD player, if I can use that, that analogy. So we do not need sophisticated equipment. So how do we begin to launch? Uh, we will start with a CLIA laboratory, and I know that's a very technical term for some of you, but we'll offer it as a service, marketing it directly to the clinician. This is very important in this market. In many cases, we would have to sell to a laboratory who then is expected to sell to the clinician. With the CLIA lab, we can go right to these neurologists. And what we've highlighted here is this is a very small group of sophisticated uh, physicians. So the 400,000 patients in the U.S. 
13,000 neurologists, but in the end, there's less than 5,000 that focus on the disease and the, and the um, actual drug therapies that manage these MS patients. So our goal is within the first three years to get to the key opinion leaders in the 250 MS centers, and we can do that with a small sales organization of 10 to 15. Our goal then is to make product and then sell it to the large reference laboratories, and then ultimately to license it so that the people like the Abbotts, the BMRUs, and the Roches can put it on their systems. So our go-to-market strategy starts with the clinician and moves on to large institutions like Abbott that have very sophisticated sales organizations that can then take it to the next step so that we get long-term adoption. Our adoption approach is called MSDX Monitored Lives. So the payers call them covered lives, we call them monitored lives, because our goal is to be with that patient from the time they're diagnosed for the rest of their lives, in some cases 40 to 50 years, so they could use a general uh, blood test like ours. So I started with the, the unmet need, and then I focused a little bit on the technology, and this is our go-to-market strategy. Our goal is, is that we would actually be launching our, our test, offering it as at least one of these biomarkers as sometime next year. And our funding, fundraising that we're doing right now is focused in three areas, the next clinical studies, the launching of our first assay as a CLIA lab, and then um, ultimately to start to uh, work in the other areas like Parkinson's that I had said. So with that, to summarize a uh, couple of key things, um, personalized medicine solution, and that's why it's always great to have Diagnostics up as one of the first uh, companies to present. We believe in innovative technology. It's really a platform, a platform that can be used in multiple diseases and go on equipment that's already installed in the 6,000 laboratories across the country. We will also be leveraging that into Canada and to Europe. Those are the three countries that we've planned for. Um, a proven business model, again, it's all about repeat revenue. That's how you can make a relatively small disease like this commercially feasible. And then the last thing I would like to say is, is I, I have to thank the state of Arizona for all the support they've given us. There's a word we use down in Tucson, it takes a community to raise a company. And I couldn't, uh, I couldn't be more heartfelt. You know, we came out of a, a program that was the Eller McGuire Entrepreneurship Program. We went right into the University of Arizona incubator. We work with their core laboratory all of the time. Now, why am I mentioning this to you? We could never do it without these kinds of resources and support from Arizona. We have a very active Desert Angel group, and our chairman is here, uh, that uh, we've had two rounds of funding. We are very pleased to have received a grant from the Arizona uh, Commerce Authority, uh, both FAST grants and an innovation grant, and uh, the tremendous support from all of our community. So part of the reason why I'm here is we want to make sure we can continue to engage Phoenix, as well as all of the support that we've, we've gotten in the state overall. So I'll end with that. We believe that, that we can offer a good return, uh, fill an unmet need in a very important disease. Thank you.